what really matters in the end is coffee. Hello and welcome to Christie's Magic Kingdom of Books. It's not really magic. It's the writing shed. It's a shed. Welcome to my magic shed. There is literally a dog head in my lap right now. She will not move. She's just staring at me. So nothing has changed since last we spoke, except dun 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 Number 10 is out at last. Honestly, I wrote this book so long ago. Like the first draft. Like three years <laughs> more that I first started writing this. I've been writing this for as long as I've been alive. And then just life happened, rubbish happened. It was the most ridiculous of things. I just want you to know the puggle is now eating dirt. So my life is so glamorous. So right, number 10, let me tell you about it. Let me tell you the story. Some of you have asked, why Christy? Why did it take so long for number 10 to come out? And it was like, okay, I was writing my adult books and I'd come up with this idea and my agent and I had talked about it to write another book in the night school world. And I started writing this book set at Samaria Academy. And no matter what I did, no matter how hard I tried, it didn't come to life. It just felt like the same, like I was trying to write the same thing I'd already written. It was the same bad guys, the same good guys. But one character just stood out and every time she appeared on the screen, the page lit up and that was the Prime Minister's daughter. And so I wrote to my agent and I said, actually, I don't wanna write this book that I'm writing now. I wanna write about her. I wanna look at her and what it's like to be 16 years old and to suddenly have your life turned upside down because of your parents' political ambition. And I wanted to play around with gender roles. In particular, at the time I first started thinking about this, Britain had a female Prime Minister. So that was interesting as well. What's it like to have your mother be this powerful political figure with, you've got your own tensions with your mom. I mean, I don't know about you guys, but when I was 16, my mom and I had some tensions sometimes. So that coupled with your mother's political situation. So anything you do that gets you in trouble has political ramifications for her and her career. Like it has these huge knock-on effects and so suddenly everything you as a teenager do impacts the government and that's insane right but it's also true like there was a thing that stayed in my mind and plays into chapter one of number 10 and that's when tony blair was prime minister and his son ewan who was a teenager at the time was photographed in Leicester Square out with some friends in London, very drunk apparently, and, and, and not very well. And so just doing that thing teenagers do when they're experimenting and they're trying out being grown-ups and they make mistakes, only because of who his dad was. This was on the front cover of every tabloid. And clearly this thing, which happened like 17 years ago, stayed in my mind as I went on through my, the rest of my like writing life and then so that suddenly when I sat down with this prime minister's child I thought of it and I wanted to write about that experience about I mean the paparazzi if you've ever seen them in action are a scary bunch of guys and they are men and they are big men and they're loud and they're boorish and they're pushy and if you're not used to it and who is it could be quite terrifying so that also I wanted it looks glamorous the pictures they take we all look at them I look at them I'm just as guilty as everybody and they take these pictures of these beautiful people, but the way they get those pictures is like stealing a little part of them in the night against their will. And that can go terribly wrong. And so for a younger person as well, that would be terrifying, I think. I just think that would be really scary. So I wanted to just look at all these different elements of politics. So politics itself, the heart of government, what's going on there, it's filled with intrigue, it's filled with gossip, it's filled with power play. And then from a young person's perspective, it's powerlessness because their parents have the power, but they have even less power than you or I because they must abide by rules that you and I don't ever have to worry about. If we go out and make a mistake, if we, the first time we have a drink of wine, get a little tipsy, the only person who cares is us and our mom and dad and you know maybe the police if you're very unlucky um but and, and let's, let's, that's another story just kidding um anyway only half kidding um i feel like if if you're thrown into this world of celebrity and politics and intrigue and you're right at the heart of it it's gonna impact how you live 
it's going to change how you look at the world. It's going to change how you look at yourself and how you and your parents get along. And that's what number 10 is all about. I just wanted to look at that power. But also, once you start looking at power in Britain and you're me, then you're in the world of Sumeria because that's what it's all about. After all, it's really about the children of the rich and the powerful feeling powerless and like pawns in their parents' battles for more power. So how was number 10 not going to fit in that world? And so I don't know how many of you have read it. Well, I kind of know because I know about sales. <laughs> if you haven't read it, and even if you have, it is set in the Samir Academy world, but six and a half years after the end of Endgame. So the characters in night school are now in their early 20s. Raj Patel is still Raj Patel. Um, some of the adults are still around and some are not. And some of the young people that you know are now the adults. So it's this crossover. You'll see different names that are familiar and some names may surprise you. And I've not focused in the first book on the characters you probably expect me to focus on. In fact, it's funny, one of the characters I get the most emails about I mean, obviously Sylvan, most of you, soft-hearted, lovely people, email me about Sylvan, wanting to know, is he okay, is he okay? And I'm, that is not answered in book one, that's not answered in number 10, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna lie to you. Um, it comes up later, but not in book one. I don't want to jump straight into the deep end here. But the other character I hear a lot about is Jules, and that really surprises me, because she got she got a bad shrift didn't she like she it wasn't her fault what happened that she had to leave she wasn't a bad person and you know ali and carter they kind of cheated on her they didn't mean to and it wasn't a situation they asked for but i mean a lot of people wrote me after endgame oh by the way spoiler alert if you haven't read endgame why haven't you read endgame go read it right now um to ask but what about jules so I, wanna, I do answer that question in book one. And I also answer the obvious question for myself, which is where has Raj Patel gone to, to keep the world safe? Um, and what became of various people? You'll look, I don't wanna give too much away. So I'm not gonna give too much away. I will say that writing the end of number 10 made me cry. Like I sat at my computer crying with like happiness. <laughs> and seeing these names again, was absolutely like walking down the street in a busy city and running into an old friend I'd lost touch with for six or seven years and suddenly there they are and they look great and it, we go and we have coffee and we catch up and everything is like we set the world right and it's just joy it was just purest joy being back in that world now book two goes much deeper into the world of night school so we get to see many more characters. We go back to familiar places, but it's also still seen primarily from the perspective of the new characters. So it's like an outsider's view of a place we've all been on the inside of. And that in itself is, is a great experience for me as a writer and as someone who loves that world. Like it's, I just, every day when I sit down to write, I'm like, la la la, here we go out to the chapel <laughs> because we are back at Samaria in book two and I get to, have the map in my head again. In fact, have you seen the new Night School editions? I know I'm digressing, but if you haven't, hold on, hold on, don't give up. I'm going to talk about this in a separate film, but just I mentioned map. And there's a map of Samaria, and it's so pleasing. Like, look, 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 look. You can see where everything is, and it just makes me so happy having this there, because I've drew this map with my own little hands. I mean, not pretty like this. Jasmine, my amazing graphics, like, partner in crime made this one out of my hand drawing, which I drew back in 2010. But now at last, I love it. It all makes perfect sense because I always had a drawing and I always worked with a drawing. So I get to go back and I actually used my drawing when I was writing book two in number 10, which by the way is called Codename Firefly. And it is, which is my favorite name of maybe any name I've ever come up with for a book. Although I really like number 10 and I really like night school, so maybe not, but it's, it's in my top 12. <laughs> I've written 12 books, so it's a joke. Okay, anyway. <laughs> right, so number 10 um, takes us back there in a way that's completely different for me and hopefully for you, but also familiar, so that you feel like you're going there without going over old ground. It, it should, to me, it feels new. And having the Prime Minister's kid there, 
like having Grey, who I really like. She's very different from Ellie, although they, they share certain things in book two that they don't necessarily share in book one because what happens to Grey in book one is going to change her and, and knock her back a bit. It's what, what always happens in night school and in this world, I suppose, is you got to get knocked around and then get stronger. That's actually what we should all be doing right now in this crazy world of no Christmases and no Hanukkahs and no like fun family get togethers because disease. So we're taking our knocks and we're going to get stronger. I hope number 10 and reading it and coming to my Instagram page, tell me what you think as long as it's good. I'm going to Goodreads if you didn't like it. <laughs> Stan in France, I'm looking at you. Three stars. Or was it two? Stan. Stan. Whoever you are. How could you? <laughs> anyway, so come talk to me about it. I'm always here. I hope you like it. I love it. I'm so excited to be back in this world, and I hope you are too. And there'll be at least two more books in this world, and I am writing them literally as fast as I can. And when I say that, I'm not kidding. Like, my publishers are are chasing me in a way they've never chased before because I am late thanks to pandemics and other crises um, but I will be done before the end of the year and it will be getting translated early next year and out into your hands, pocketbooks, desk, drawers, um, computer drives before then, before you even know. Thank you for hanging around. Tell me even in the comments here, what did you think? Are you happy? Do you like Jules? Do you hate Jules? Are you mad at me because Sylvan may or may not, probably isn't, no is not, in book one of number 10, have I let you down? I hope not, because he's coming, he's coming. So yeah, take care in the meantime. Stay safe, keep breathing. <laughs>